<laughs> I want adaptogens. I know, what are those? What are they? I hope they'll be in our room when we get back. Um, Amber, uh, it's, it's such a pleasure to talk to you. It's always been a pleasure to talk to you. Um, 20 years ago, when you arrived, and I guess what was the second wave of supermodels, you were always so open and accessible and um, where a lot of your peers, you could feel that they hadn't really felt their way into the job, but you always were so present. So it's, it's interesting to hear how actually there was a behind the scenes story <laughs> that was happening there that you presented extremely well, but there actually was all that inner turmoil and... and I'm surprised that you say that, so thank you, because um, I always felt I was cranky and... Um, shy and rebellious. Um, yeah, I mean, I was 15 when I started modeling and um, from Oklahoma and, you know, I don't, I hadn't traveled much, I'd never been outside the United States and when I met you I think I was probably 17 or 18 and um, my trajectory was quick, although I had model during the summer, it was quick. And, um, you know, everything I learned, I really learned out in the world in fashion. I knew a little bit, but I was really naive coming from Oklahoma and not having seen the world. And so all of my, I think, rebellious teenage angst and all of that came out when I got to the fashion world. I would have never talked back to my mom, but when I got into modeling, I felt this inner struggle of, of um, kind of a poor kid, making it well, being insecure because you're still gawky and strange, um, being told you're beautiful, and having a lot of pressure to be professional at 18, 17 years old, um, but also loving it because I was a creative person and an emotional person and that always was a part of my experience since I was little. So there was another part of me that was, when I was working, was completely engaged. But, but I did feel, you know, I'm, I'm, it's so nice that you say that, but I always, I look back thinking, God, I must have been such a little shit. Maybe it was just me. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, did you recognize the industry as we, the modeling industry, as we heard it described yesterday? Yes. Yes, I think James brought great attention and light to truths that um, I think have been a part of the industry, uh, you know, in my time and probably before my time and obviously still today. And, um, and I think it's changed and the way it's changed, you know, James brought up, but, you know, we were, yeah, I mean, there were mean things said plenty of times, but, you know, I, I don't hold on to those things and I'm not a victim and you know I they they did definitely or were not why I went down the path that I went down. So you you wouldn't you wouldn't ever say the industry enabled you in in any way. And let, and maybe perhaps we should say what we're talking about. <laughs> um you know I, my drug and alcohol use and abuse was not you know because of the fashion industry. I would have used, had I been in college, or had I stayed in Oklahoma, I would have because it's a part of, it is who I, it's part of me. I know I would have done it. I was already experimenting in, in school since a very, you know, at a really young age. So I had more access and it was more acceptable. And, um, you know, maybe sometimes even valued in a weird way, but, um, I would not blame any of the kind of negative, you know, talk or treatment to my acting out. So at what point did, did it occur to you that you needed to do something about your, that we've heard about uh, people who made transformations in their lives. At what point did it occur to you that you needed to do something to get yourself well? I, you know, I, I realized pretty quickly into my um, drug use and alcohol abuse that I was not someone who could handle it. I was not um, someone who went you know, home after the party was over. I continued to take the party further. Um, 
I was never somebody who embraced the rock and roll lifestyle. Like, I was always ashamed that I was, you know, using more than what was, you know, normal. And um, because of that shame, it perpetuated a lot more inner turmoil and darkness. And, and I think that, um, you know, my bottom was very lonely. I was at the top of my career, probably the peak of my youth, and I was alone in my apartment after three days on a binge, practically, you know, going into cardiac arrest and could not stop. And I don't, and I had millions of dollars riding on me. You know, I was under contract, multiple contracts. And to me, that is evidence that it is a, a real disease, it's a real force that, you know, had I had the willpower, I could have, I would have stopped. I wouldn't have shown up, you know, when someone was sick in my family dying, hi, at the hospital. Like, who does that? That is Addict. lack addicts mm -hmm. because there is a lack of control and they cannot stop. And so for me, when I realized that I was, you know, about to not just lose my career, but potentially lose my life, and I didn't want to die like that. I really didn't. I thought, what a pathetic way to go. So I I sought help at 25 and I've been sober, clean and sober ever since. So. <laughs> I don't. I don't think that deserves a an applause. But it, it to me, what it has done is it's brought me everything. I would have nothing. It is the single most important thing in my life. And I would say, yes, my son is my life. My family is my life. But without my sobriety, I have absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. And you've been able to model through that entire process. Mm -hmm. So it, it, I, I, would have, I would think that there's something about modeling, I would imagine, when you see the images that people make of you, the pictures that people like Peter Lindbergh and Steven Meisel took of you, where your beauty is, is otherworldly. And at the same time, you know the person behind the picture. So that disconnect, you have to br build a bridge between the public and the private, you know, strike a balance. We've heard the word balance a lot. So how did you manage to, oh, actually, what did it feel like when you, when you managed to balance your, your needs and your, you know, your professional career? Did it change the way you felt about modeling? Yes and no. I mean, I've always felt a bit of, I mean, I see myself as a creative person and more in, I wouldn't say I'm an artist, but I see it more as artistry, and I don't, I don't feel I have ownership of the whole image because I'm one piece of the puzzle and it's a collaborative team. And, um, and also, you know, I'm, it's not about me. I am there to project, you know, an idea of something or fantasy. So I had, from, very, from the very beginning, I didn't really attach my ego as much to it. Being told as a woman on a daily basis, you look great. That's a different story. But my identity in the world and the fame and all of that, I really didn't attach myself to it. But I didn't really appreciate, I think, my job and my, I think the ability to, to be, um, to kind of do so many great things until I left the business to pursue acting. And then when I came back in the last few years, I've really, you know, with age comes wisdom. And I've had a lot of, I just have so much gratitude and respect. And I respect my history. I respect the people around me's history. I respect the artistry. I respect the business. And I understand the problems that we're facing and the implications of that. And that my job as someone who's been in the industry for 27 years is to also speak to those issues and you know be a valued influencer and not just an influencer you know and and who are you thinking about 
influencing when you, when you talk like this? Who, who, who is it you have in mind? Are young girls who are coming into the industry or, or, a, or a much bigger picture? You know, it's, at the moment, it's been a much bigger picture. My concern at the moment has really been about sustainability and responsibility within the fashion industry. I, we are an archaic industry thriving on modern creativity and we're still producing clothing as if it doesn't matter, as if it's disposable, as if it's okay to dump toxins in water or, you know, um, put people to work in unfair and unreasonable situations or put children to work to make a t-shirt or to buy a t-shirt, as everybody's been speaking about, that costs less than a cup of coffee. And to me, that's the bigger issue right now that we face, is that as a planet, we are, you know, we're at a tipping point. And we won't really have any place to work it all out, you know, to model, to get sober, to fight for whatever, or just simply enjoy life if we don't have a healthy planet. But do you find coming back into the industry that that there are more people who feel as you do? do you, what, what changes have you seen in, in the, 20, the 27 years? Well, we didn't have any, I don't think we had enough information, obviously, 20 years ago. Climate change was just being, you know, kind of talked about. But I have seen a huge change. I mean, I started a business a few, maybe five, six years ago, and when I was speaking about sustainability and responsibly made clothing, people looked at me like I was insane and, you know, glazed over. And now there's such a movement towards trying to solve these issues and, you know, Vogue has style ethics and, you know, there's just, there's so many people trying to, to do better. But it is a, it's a, it's a very important issue and it's one that the elite of the industry have such power to change the masses. Do you, do you think models have more, um, have more power now than they did when you were modeling? Absolutely, absolutely. The power to have 45 million followers to listen to you, I mean, I don't know if it translates in consumerism and buying, I don't know. Or activism. Or activism. But I think you probably would have someone's attention. Well, you look at, you, I think if you look at Carly Kloss or Gigi Hadid, um, who women in the young, in the early 20s mm -hmm. with these mega million mm -hmm. numbers following them, they are using their positions. They, they are, are speaking out. I yeah. mean, they are very, very deliberately setting themselves up as role models. So, uh, what's your, what's your, um, I mean, your impression of that is obviously good, but what do you, when you're with those women, do you feel, God, these, they're so much more evolved than I was totally. when I was that age? Totally, when I met Carly, I was like, I'm so impressed by you, because you, you saw this as a business and as a brand, and I was just too busy being creative and, you know, going into the deeper meaning of, the scarf or whatever we were shooting, which I think is, is a beautiful part of our industry, the, the creativity and the, the you know, nuances and the fantasy. But for someone like a model, like Carly, to, to create a brand for herself that not only is just about, hey, look at me, I'm beautiful, but I'm a role model. I'm not just a supermodel. I'm a role model for young women. And she's done an amazing job at that. And I think that that's, it's so powerful. And I think hopefully we'll see more and more of that because, you know, I don't really think we need more selfies. <laughs> you know, we need more expression of what do you believe in? Who are you? What is your value? What, you know, how you can influence people. Or if you're going to create your own line, do it the right way. Start thinking about the materials that you're going to use or the factories you're going to produce in. That is one of the, my biggest pet peeves is like, figure out, it's not a black and white subject. There's a lot of gray and there's a lot of room for improvement, but there's so many people who are starting these like, you know, lines and stuff and there's, 
no reason why they shouldn't be doing it better. Do you feel when you're talking to women that they're, they treat you in a different way because of what you achieved in your life, that, that they have a, that, that your, your words carry more weight or they, they just have this, you know, because they know you as Amber Valletta. Do you feel that that's given you an advantage in some way now? I don't actually think the younger generation knows who I am. Or when are you? Oh. <laughs> I really don't. I'm not like that hot on, you know, social media. So like, I don't know that any they of them. They watched Revenge. Maybe they watched Revenge. Um, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I don't really. Well, know. Women your own age, though, maybe then. Do you do you find what, like, as you say, we're saying Carly's talking to women her age. Mm -hmm. Do you feel you're talking to women your age? I feel I'm you're... speaking to women my age. Yeah. I feel I'm speaking to mothers, um, women who have kind of had some life experience, who know who they are, who, you know, what matters to them now is how they'll leave the world. Um, they want to feel good. They want to look great. They want to, but feeling good and looking great are not just about, you know, putting on a nice outfit anymore. It's what we've been talking about this morning. It's meditation. It's how you give out into your community, the world we live in, who's making your clothes, how they're made, what's in your products. Like, those are the women I'm speaking to. Those are the women that I relate to. And, you know, they're probably not, you know, too much younger than me. You know, they're probably not 20. But I, I, I hope the 20 year olds are listening. You know, uh, listening to everybody this morning, I think what comes across is, is the journey mm -hmm. that everybody made from where they were to where they are, and the, how that did involve trial and error and pain and so on. How different do you think you'd be if that whole experience of the modeling industry in the 90s, the heady days of the 90s, hadn't happened? What do you imagine you would be doing now? Gosh. I have no idea. I, I mean, probably something. I wanted to be a social worker at one point. I wanted to be an anthropologist. I wanted to be an archaeologist, but that's when I, you know, thought it was going to be like Indiana Jones. Um, it's not too late. No, I'll just be. Um, I don't know. I mean, I, ultimately, I think it would have been in some sort of public service because that is sort of my nature. Wow, you could be my social worker. <laughs> but um, I don't know. I, I really don't know. I was started so young at 15 that I didn't even know, I didn't even know there was such a thing as a career in fashion. But the thing is, it, I, it, didn't, I didn't know. It didn't exist like that when you started. I mean, everything changed after it's that. It's true. Modeling is now a totally different thing. It is a totally different thing. I mean, the definition of, of listening to James yesterday, there was obviously a real dark side there, but it's there, are, there is light, you know, there are, there are people like you who came through the tunnel, came out the other Absolutely. side. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, fashion gave me my education. They taught me everything, honestly. I mean, yes, my family, you know, gave me my fundamentals and the values and things that I, I, I came into the fashion industry with, those basics, but everything from culture to um, etiquette to art to how to be a professional, all those things. Fashion taught me that, those things. Taught me to kind of see the world in, in different ways and, and to experience life in a, a colorful way, in a creative way. And gave me the opportunity to explore, you know, characters and, and I don't know, I just, I feel like it's given me so much, more than anything, you know, more than acting has ever given me. The fashion industry is kind of where I got my PhD or, you know, my now master class. Now you're leaving here to, to go and do a shoot in London. Do you, do you actually feel that now, you, when you're bringing that experience to a, to a photo shoot, that actually modeling is like acting in the end, isn't it? You are performing. Yes and no. I mean, modeling is, is all about camera um, recognition and whether your back is to the camera or not, you know the camera and where the camera always is. You always have to be cognizant of it. Whereas in film, the most important thing as an actress, besides being honest, is to lose the camera. 
And I think that that's one of the big mistakes models make is that they keep that awareness of the camera and, and it looks like they're, you know, a deer in headlights kind of thing. And, um, you know, so I, I, I don't see it the same way and I also feel that it's more intimate because it's maybe, maybe now people are hiring me more because of my life experience and, and my legacy rather than, um, you know, my followers. <laughs> that's, that, and that's a change too. Yeah. That's, a, that's a very, very positive point. It's a positive point to close on. But you said with age comes wisdom, so I need some words of wisdom from you. Okay. Oh, you said you need I some, need words, some words, of, words of wisdom. I was like, from are you going to ask me a question? <laughs> um, gosh, that's a, like, just. What would you tell? What What would you say to anyone who wanted to be, wanted to be the next Amber Valletta? What would you say to that that woman? That I girl? would say wait until you're at least 18, cultivate who you are, because I just feel as a woman, um, I think it's important to be home with your family and finish school and, um, but also, you know, there's no reason to be exposed to a lot of the world and adult things at that age without your parents or, or a chaperone. So that's one thing I would say is wait until you're 18. The other thing is just, you know, enjoy the ride. Learn as much as you can. There's a, you know, so many interesting people in fashion. Um, and, you know, realize that it's a business. You know, I was really anti-business when I was modeling. You know, I looked at the girls who made brands of themselves as like the, you know, <laughs> and today I don't, I don't believe that. I think you can kind of meld your values and your beauty and your brains all into one. And um, so if you have that, I think use it, go for it. And also cultivate yourself in other ways. You know, modeling will end perhaps or it'll slow down. And so find other things that, you know, you enjoy or that will ignite your passions or will pay the bills, you know? Thank you. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.